Hey guys, how's it going? And today we have a North Carolina ranked battle sent in by Nyrab. And when I saw this replay, I was pretty amazed by what he does because he basically carries this game. And he does a really good job of, I guess, showing how a battleship should act in a ranked battle as to how hard you should push and how you should play it when you get stuck in a situation where you don't really want to be. Now, the North Carolina is a very strong pick for ranked. It has some very good front armor, has fairly decent guns, very strong anti-aircraft in case you see any anti-aircraft carriers, which is pretty unlikely, and it can definitely punch for its tier, especially when it's facing something like a German battleship, or even an Amagi that doesn't have as much armor as either of them, in my opinion. Its guns are fairly small, compared to, say, the Amagi, but it'll still hit pretty damn hard, and it has a shell arc that is really good for punching through other battleships' deck armor, and basically causing damage when they're trying to go bow on to you. Its dispersion isn't in its favor all the time, though, as these nine guns tend to like to straddle targets, especially with their weird shell arc. Looks like there's a Benson slipping into the cap that their whole team is pushing on and he's trying to fight our friendly destroyer that's over there and it looks like one of them just pops smoke. Nyrab launches some shots in the general direction. Maybe those will hit, maybe they won't. It was just kind of a maybe, maybe we'll help the friendly destroyers out kind of shot. And now he's turning his attention to the enemy fleet that has been spotted sitting behind the A cap which they are currently pushing as our team kind of situates around where that Benson is and tries to get into where they could fight for that cap zone. Now that North Carolina is not going very fast as you can see by most of the friendly team missing their shots and I do believe those will miss too as like I said he, he really wasn't going that fast maybe quarter half speed and he did a good job of avoiding a lot of damage in that salvo. Now Nyrab is broadside to a couple of battleships. While he's not super broadside to that North Carolina he was just firing at, that Tirpitz definitely has his flank, and the North Carolina is not known for its side armor unlike the German battleships. It will get citadel very easily through the side. But he's going to lob some shots behind him and ooh, there's some decent hits on that Tirpitz. He's done about 10,000 damage to him so far. And the last one adds another thousand to it, so not bad hits. Uh, if that could, if that Kutuzov had sailed around a little bit sooner, he probably would have flattened him, because that uh, that light cruiser would not have lasted too long. And it looks like he's now taking that into account and trying to take out that little fire spammer. Kutuzov looks to have popped his smoke or hidden behind a destroyer smoke cloud. So those two overpen hits won't really do much. And ooh, not good. Looks like we did get one of their destroyers, but they have taken out our New Orleans. Not an amazing ship for ranked in my opinion. Its range and shell arc really do hurt it in the ranked arena. Especially since you don't see any carriers really that could take advantage of its anti-aircraft. Looks like that North Carolina is back to sailing full speed. Nyrab launches some shells downrange. They look fairly decent. Overpen, there's a decent hit. And another decent hit doing about 6,000 damage to that enemy North Carolina. He may heal that back up, but that's just a heal that he won't have later on. A lot of ranked battles come down to a war of attrition. Who has the most ships, who has the most health, who has the points that they can spare if they have to make a push. It's all about managing the resources and firepower that you have. And knowing where the enemy fleet is, is a major part of that. Especially if you can tell what health they are, where their general vicinity is, and where they may be going. So, Nyrab's team has started to push around to the south side of the map. Both teams have basically kind of switched spawns at this point. They're doing a big loop-de-loop -loop around each other. Since Nyrab's team has two destroyers, two of the enemies one, they do have sort of an advantage based on the fact that they could torpedo the enemy battleships from stealth and possibly sneak a cap zone if they needed to. 
Looks like that Tirpitz has no intention of coming around the side of that island as he looks to re be reversing. Narab slows to a stop to see where the enemy fleet is even going as that Tirpitz is the only thing spotted. Oh, there's the North Carolina trying to hide behind that island. No real decent shots on him and then Amagi is taking some hits because he's broadside and it looks like he will be going down pretty soon. Whether it's the fire from the Kutuzov, yep it was. Broadside to an enemy Tirpitz, especially in a battlecruiser Amagi, that's going to be painful and that's going to leave you heading to the bottom. It definitely won't help your ranked stats at all. 4,000 damage on the end there, doing a decent hit to that enemy Tirpitz that isn't moving quite fast yet. Will those hit? Nope, looks like those straddled. That's kind of sad, looks like the Tirpitz is speeding up though, so he's going to afford us a nice shot on his side if he continues to come out. It does look like he's turning in to avoid these torpedoes though and slowing down. So Nyrab leads him as he slows down, and those look pretty good. Hitting around midsection, looks like that one overpenned the superstructure and that last one bounced. Nyrab has one more gun he can still fire. There's that fire spewing Kutuzov again. Lobs the shells downrange at that, hoping for maybe a citadel since he is broadside. 8,000 damage still isn't bad. Not a citadel, but will make him run away as he just lost a good portion of his health bar. Unloads his front two primary guns at him. And looks like... I'm not sure what messed that up. I think the Tirpitz was targeted when he fired those. Because it looks like the kind of shell assist that the game has led those towards the Tirpitz. Now the question is how broadside does this North Carolina want to go and how much is he going to push that Tirpitz to go broadside because they look like really decent targets right now as Nyrab continues to launch shells down there and not score any hits which not sure if that's in-game targeting issues or if that's just the North Carolina being the North Carolina. Destroyers are doing a good job of screening for everybody and launching torpedoes to keep these battleships moving. The only thing that's not doing too hot right now is that hipper that has full attention of both these battleships. Narab lets go with a full salvo on that Tirpitz and manages to take out 15 to 16,000 of his health, leaving him at 10,000 and fairly low. One of these torpedoes might finish him off right here as one of our Bensons goes down and he takes out the Tirpitz with him. North Carolina is pushing up it looks like, but does he know Nyrab is basically on his flank? It looks like no, he's showing his full broadside. That's an easy citadel if any of these shells pen in the right place. There's one, there's still one, and looks like only one with two overpens going into the side of that North Carolina. Nyrab secondaries are going off, doing a little bit of damage I guess, but the fire on that North Carolina is definitely his more pressing concern. He's focusing down that destroyer so much that he still doesn't notice Nyrab on his side and somehow did not notice those torpedoes that he ran smack dab into. But that Fubuki has found himself in a difficult spot and may not survive too long. But this New Orleans has found himself in a difficult spot too, as he's broadside to a battleship, and his broadside is definitely not armored. There goes our Fubuki to the enemy Kutuzov. Not a good thing for us, as it leaves us with two battleships versus a battleship, two cruisers, and a destroyer. This game has turned around quite fast. Our other battleship is behind us in the B cap. Not entirely sure what he's doing, but I'm sure it is constructive. I hope it is, at least. Is Hopefully fire. he's not pulling a Tirpitz. And looks like the Kutuzov has just popped up in front of us. Lobs another salvo at the New Orleans, hoping for a bit of damage. 7,000 is not bad. That cruiser cannot recover its health. So he will be down at 12,000 health for the rest of the game. As it looks like... The New Orleans and the enemy battleship have turned their focus to the friendly battleship that is behind Nyrab. Now there is a Kutuzov directly in front of Nyrab which is not a good thing because Kutuzov has 8km torpedoes 
and those can do serious damage to a battleship. Lob shells downrange at the New Orleans, hits him with a citadel and takes him out. Fabuki is spotted on his side, secondaries open up, absolutely lighting, <laughs> lighting sorry, into the side of that Fabuki. Dodges the torpedo spreads from the Kutuzov. There's the Fabuki again. Main guns didn't turn in time. Dodges all three spreads from the Fabuki. Now he is unspotted right now. Neither the cruiser or the Fabuki can spot him. Which is good because if that Kutuzov was firing armor piercing, he'd go right through the side. But there's the Kutuzov. He has braved. He has gotten brave and he's come out of the smoke. Nairab's secondaries open up on the Kutuzov. He's trying to turn his main batteries around. The Kutuzov has launched torpedoes again from the other side of his ship. And Nairab continues going in a straight line to dodge as many of those as he can. I believe he takes two, which causes him to flood. And he's set on fire in two places. Puts those out. Sinks the Fubuki with secondaries, giving him the close quarters award. Drops more shells into the side of the Kutuzov, trying to sink this Russian cruiser. Does 16,000 damage as our Tirpitz is sank by the enemy North Carolina. So, 1 versus 2, the cruiser is low health, and we have no clue how much that North Carolina has. Looks like the Kutuzov is going broadside to try to get a salvo off, but Nairab's shots into a superstructure, despite being overpens, will take him out. So he's at 135,000 damage with a high caliber, a confederate, and a close quarters expert from that Fubuki. Now all he needs to do is either sink or outcap this enemy North Carolina. Now they're both the same ship, they're both the same speed, they both have the same firepower. The only difference is going to be their health. And we're not sure what that enemy North Carolina is at after killing our Tirpitz. Nairab being fairly confident, sails straight for the ACAP, hoping that the enemy, North Carolina, is not going to be right there waiting for him to pop his broadside around this corner. The question is, will this gamble pay off? Launches a scout fighter to see where he is, and there is the enemy, North Carolina. He is at 10,000 health, which is not good for him because Nairab has 30,000, which is three times what he has. And that gives Nairab a lot more leeway on what he wants to do when he engages that enemy North Carolina. And he could have sailed straight around this corner and emptied a broadside right into him, probably sinking him, but would risk a lot of his health in the process. You can see him looking to see where that enemy North Carolina is. Looks like the enemy North Carolina has no clue where Nairab is. So we're going to leave him in the dark right now and take this cap point. And of course, kind of slowing down a bit in order to fully take the cap before he sails out. Pops a heal, or a damage repair party, sorry, in order to regain some of his health back and make sure he is fit for fighting when this enemy North Carolina decides to make his move. He will have to make a move at some point, as by the time he gets in that cap and caps it out, Nairab will have the point lead. So it looks like this damage can or not control, damage repair party will leave Nairab at 43,000 health, which is a lot better for fighting that enemy North Carolina. But this is where Nairab kind of makes a mistake. Now, he does have a point lead, and he could just run with it. There's only six minutes left, and that North Carolina could get to both caps in that time. But he could run with it and hope that his points are enough by the end of the game to win it and not have to worry about that enemy North Carolina that has just sailed into the B cap. So he is kind of retreating right now. There's the North Carolina again being spotted by the, his spotting plane. And he is keeping his guns pointed in that general direction as he swings his ship back towards the south. The question is, where is that North Carolina going to go? Is he going to stay broadside? Is he going to charge straight at A? It's really hard to tell when that spotting plane swings around the other side of Nairab's ship. So basically he's going to have to wonder what's his detection range and how is that going to compare to his. Because if they have the same, they'll spot each other at the same time. Both of them will be broadside 
and will be fairly easy targets for each other's guns. And looks like both of them do have the same sp same spotting range. The enemy North Carolina is going extremely slowly in that cap zone as he tries to cap it. Nairab unloads all three batteries but stays broadside towards the enemy North Carolina. Looks like Nairab didn't do a lot of damage but took 10,000 in return and one of his turrets is now incapacitated which means it will have to fully reload before it can fire again. So not a very good trade right there. Being broadside, both battleships definitely took a huge risk, risk there. Now, Nairab's going to slip behind this island. He's probably going to spot that North Carolina if it has sped up. And since they do have the same detection range at 13.7 kilometers... Uh, looks like none of them will be spotted, which is very interesting seeing how is that enemy North Carolina should have sped up once Nairab had fired on it. And there he was spotted again by the spotter plane. Looks like he has turned in to go bow on. There he is. Nairab lines up his third turret. First two are swinging around on the opposite side of his ship and he launches that third over the island and continues his turn as he is spotted. Now he's lucky, oh, there's some shots from the enemy North Carolina as he pops in and out of spotting again. Now he starts to turn out again, but takes another decent hit in the side of his ship. And he's really playing with his health bar right here. This is not exactly recommended when you're in these 1v1s where you do have an advantage over him. Like I said, Nairab is really good on points, he can run for it. But if he keeps getting spotted and showing his broadside, it will e it could easily lead to a couple citadels that could put him out of the game and earn victory for the enemy team in this 1v1 situation. So basically now we're trying to figure out what is that enemy North Carolina going to do. His only options are to either kill Nairab or push into that cap to stop their points and hope Nairab comes back to try to stop him where he can kill him. Nairab got his one heal back, popped it, and is going to gain back a little bit of health before this enemy North Carolina comes around this corner and tries to get into the alpha cap. He's still sailing out at an outward angle. His ship is angled now, though he is turning back in as the enemy North Carolina is spotted again. Enemy North Carolina coming around the corner, drops three shots right in front of him continues his inward turn hoping the enemy North Carolina didn't fire yet but his shells got there first sunk the enemy North Carolina not giving him any room to turn this victory of Nairavs into a defeat with a lucky citadel or two so very risky at the end but very well played by Nairab leaving him with four kills a couple citadels three really good rewards and definitely a star for ranked Going into the first of the after battle reports shows that Nairab did 145,000 damage that game which is a huge amount if you think about only 7 ships being in that game on the enemy fleet for him to shoot at. That's a pretty decent amount of, sh of damage based on the total health that the enemy had. Close quarters expert from the Fubuki, uh, confederate, high caliber for definitely doing a ton of damage in this game and just he worked really hard for that victory despite having those few risks at the end which definitely if you have that advantage go bow on and just absolutely push your advantage into the enemy team unless of course they have torpedoes then it could get a little fishy if you know what I mean. The team scoreboard show Nairab at the top with 2300 base experience which is pretty good in my opinion uh, it's definitely ahead of the rest of his team. The Fubuki scoring second highest with 1500 and a couple more with over 1000 showing they definitely put in their work for this game and definitely props to the enemy North Carolina who scored over 1300 base on base experience on a defeat. So very good job to him for trying to hold his own at the end and earning his spot to not lose a star in that ranked battle. And finally I wanted to show the damage reports for this game. He did 145,000 damage total 
with 131 of that coming from the armor piercing from his main batteries. 13,000 of that came from secondary batteries when he got in range of the North Carolina, the Fubuki, and the Mikhail Kutuzov, with 487 coming from fires, which is probably... that might have been lighting the Mikhail Kutuzov on fire, just for a small amount. So, very good job to Nyrab, very good ranked battle showing how you can really stick it out in the end even if your team's down on ships, even if the war of attrition is kind of being lost, and just absolutely pushing his way through that enemy fleet and dodging all those torpedoes in a very, very marvelous fashion. So very good job to him. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. Have a great day and see you out there on the high seas.